Jose Aldo has requested to be released from his UFC contract or he will retire following the news of UFC 205 taking place in Madison Square Garden and Conor McGregor being uh, scheduled to fight Eddie Alvarez. Jose Aldo did not take the news all too well. Now, we've seen this. If it is a stunt, I don't know at this point. None of us do. We've seen this stunt pulled before, and it worked very well in McGregor's favor. However, I'm going to get right into the quotes and then right into what Dana White said because uh, Aldo and his camp are it sound they sound infuriated. However, if you wa it's tough to get a lot of context out of it because this is a translated from Revista Combate, which is a TV show mm -hmm. uh, in Brazil, and I'm sorry, it's a Brazilian TV show and. Uh, Jose Aldo's quotes, it's tough when you watched it, like, it can't, it's a different language, so for me to really comprehend how he sounds is not as easy as if it was in English, at least for me. So, uh, quotes number seven, eight, and nine all run into each other. Not, this is in regards to uh, MMA, his career, the entirety of uh, f his wanting to get a fight with McGregor. Not even fighting MMA, too, it has reached a limit now. I talked to uh, Dede. I'm not going to even bother. A long time ago, and he convinced me to continue. I went to the Frankie Edgar fight, and I won. I fought to win for Dede. Day. I'm not angry or upset now. Nothing. I never fought for money. I had a good career and a legacy as a featherweight champion, continues to say. If White likes me and my family, I just hope he releases me. I don't want to fight. I want to leave as I came in. The UFC and WEC didn't give me anything. Everything I conquered was my merit and from my team. Nobody gave me anything. I conquered everything. And I gave them a lot more than they gave me back. I just want them to release me from my contract. I'm not a whore to sell myself for money. I don't even want to fight MMA. I want to follow a career in another sport. That's what I want. And then Dana White followed up by saying, we won't cancel his contract. We know he got very emotional. We respect Jose Aldo very much. We care for the people around him. Habib wanted a fight on the card and we got it for him. I'm sure we can find something nice for Aldo as well. I think Dana White is missing the point or doing some fantastic misdirection because Jose Aldo doesn't want to fight anybody besides Conor McGregor. We'll get you something nice. It's like your brother Your brother gets like a PlayStation 4 for Christmas and your mom's just like, here's a Sega Genesis. There you go, there's the box. Play with the box. No, here's a, here's a, a Sega Dreamcast. Oh, I would love a Sega Dreamcast. I think you're forgetting the novelty factor of a Sega Dreamcast. I would like that I more. I think I ever played Sega Dreamcast. It was great. It just came to mind. Um, it was great. <laughs> it was great. The idea, uh, so by the way, this is actually more valid, I would say, than Habib's claims. Um, I think that, again, Habib is, is making a, a, a fuss out of the fact that he wasn't given his opportunity as a number one contender. He's valid, where uh, my argument back to that, as I mentioned yesterday, is that he hasn't fought consistently enough. Yeah, he fought, what, in, back in April against yeah, an RDA. opponent? Yeah. He fought already two fights ago, too. Yeah, uh, that's what I was back in 2013, Thir I believe. So, like, I mean, on how many people RDA. have fought RDA on since his, then? On Dos Anjos is so, um, I'm not convinced that he makes more of an appealing card than uh, Conor McGregor, but what I did state yesterday, and I will reiterate again today, is that's where the major injustice is, is that... Jose Aldo, the worthy champion that he has been to the UFC, um, all of his consistency throughout these many years, loses in emphatic fashion in a way that is, he deserves justice to try and, and make that right. Because if you lose after a grueling four or five round fight, then you're like, all right, he lost to a guy that's probably just got better than him at that point, maybe more stamina, Jose needs to go back and think things through. He lost in split seconds, which showcased that he wasn't as prepared, but it didn't showcase that McGregor was a better fighter than, yeah, than Jose true, Aldo. Yeah. So Jose Aldo, uh, after all he's given to the UFC, deserved a, a chance to try and get some sort of redemption to come back and showcase to the world that he is a worthy champion against Conor McGregor. He can, even if he doesn't beat him, that he can go past that certain 17 seconds that he happened to fight against him and, and showcase that he can mix it with McGregor. So when he proved that against Edgar, which he did, he mm -hmm. proved that he is a defensive stonewall, he is as dominant defensively, still got things I think that he would have to work on to fight McGregor, um, but proven that he is a worthy champion and worthy of his name. When you disregard that performance and allow McGregor not only to fight another fighter and don't give you the opportunity, but allow him to keep his belt, mm -hmm. having never defended it, that's the major injustice. Yeah, there, and you're 100% right on that. Uh, he, the one thing uh, that he showcased against Frankie Edgar, as we talk with Robin Black over at the MMA, uh, or at the Fight Network, uh, I should say, is he's become a defensive fighter. Mm -hmm. He's adjusted. It was one of the biggest questions going into the Frankie Edgar fight is, is Jose Aldo going to be able to adjust to the new style of MMA in the octagon after everything he went through 
after getting knocked out by Conor McGregor. And he did. He actually did it to the most perfect ability we've seen in the featherweight division. So the biggest thing that I've come to the conclusion of at this point is McGregor's fighting Eddie Alvarez. And, and Habib is the number one contender. And Jose Aldo is going to maybe get a nice fight. <laughs> the UFC rankings on UFC.com are exactly like the points in whose line it is anyway. They don't fucking matter. Yeah. They really don't. And there's no point of having rankings if you're not going to ever follow them. What matters is if you have a C next to your name. Yeah. Because if you have a C next to your for name Connor? as a champion, for <laughs> Connor, for Connor, for, uh, for Cleveland, yeah. <laughs> for the land, uh, it, for champion, because then you have some power in the UFC. If you are a champion in your division, and or I can't even say if you used to be, because Aldo was. Uh, if you are a champion, a current champion of your division, you have some power there, yeah. right? Even more so is if you are a fighter that is anywhere within the weight of that champion. If you are 10 to 12 pounds in any direction, up, down, left or right, and you are also capable of putting on a good show for Dana White, you, you're, you're, there you go, you're the number one contender. You don't have to even prove anything. You could have fought three times, put on three great shows in the past, and you probably have a better chance of getting that title fight than somebody else. So, again, if that's the case, then we, have to th we just have to throw out the rankings. It's something I'm not even going to probably bother looking at as much as I used to. I used to think, oh, look, uh, well, Habib's the number one contender in lightweight division, and Dos Anjos has kind of fallen off a little bit mm -hmm. somewhere, I think, towards the bottom of the top. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Yeah, and all of this, by the way, didn't matter as soon as we watched the press conference yesterday. Because what happened is what great, is always going to happen. is the, the, the buzz around the, the, the arena... Everyone was was like had the, had the ceiling shook by when Conor McGregor entered That's into the it. Subway that goes underneath Madison. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so like it's the same thing. It's like by the way, this it isn't a coincidence that you have an Irishman headline in the first fight in Madison Square Garden. There's such strong Irish ties to that city, huge Irish fan base. You would think that an American coming in. Uh, fighting in the first fight in New York would get more of a fan base. I heard oh, more booze. The All American, yeah, the, yeah. Chris Weidman. Well, Weidman as well. Like, I just said, whenever Eddie Alvarez spoke, he oh, was getting yeah. drowned out by booze. I mean, it might be, is he from Philadelphia? So maybe there's some uh, some bad blood I there. Know, I don't know. Exactly I think that's where he was born, but he might not. they might not care about that. They just simply care that Conor McGregor's there. He is the man that they wanted to see in that arena. So all of these doubts... Habib's claims, Aldo's claims, they just immediately got, they were white noise at that point. They were. They're white noise as soon as Conor McGregor starts talking, starts commanding the mic. Hey. And of course he had a great... It's from Philly. Got it. Don't say my MMA knowledge isn't up there. And then the best moment of the, the conference, which I'm going to throw to here, uh, is when uh, someone piped up in the background to say that he could knock Conor McGregor out. And uh, McGregor had the perfect response to that. MMA.us and Caged Insider. Conor. Take a look around you. You got a lot of champions, a lot of grizzled vets. Who do you think would give you the hardest fight out of anybody on stage? Right here. Right here, the hardest hitting 145 pound, the real hardest hitting 145 er right here. This guy TKOs people. When I knock people out, they don't fucking move. They're not, who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? You no know damn well who I am. Who the fuck is that? Um, Oh my god. I don't know. When I take that Gold, guy's belt, leprechaun. Oh, good one. When I take that guy's belt, I don't, I'm looking around. I don't know what anyone else has for me around here. I might have to jump up and fucking drag Floyd Mayweather out of bed and see what the fuck he's at again. And, uh, Frankie. <laughs> Just one Sorry. That's all you need. <laughs> you who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Seriously, who the fuck is that? I think it was John Cavanaugh who said right afterwards that he had to actually look up who it was on his phone. He had no idea. No I idea. mean, no doubt there's going to be someone. That, what do you mean? This is this is Mickey Two Feet who's fought 22 times and won every single fight in 10 seconds. Mickey Two Feet, he's got two left feet. Yeah, he's got two left feet. Two, two left feet, two right hands. Very, very strange fighter. Here's in the comments. What do you think? Uh, do, you, uh, do you believe Aldo's claims? Is he going to step away from the fighting industry? What other sports are you going to go into? That could be another clip. What Muay, fight? Muay Thai or maybe other forms? Maybe he of, just completely he goes man? different and he's like javelin. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pursue my career as a can Brazilian the, javelin. Uh, can we make him a, a United States national football team? Football team? Or, maybe. The soccer team? Who knows? Hit us in the comments. At Francis underscore Maxwell, Jason of 91. UIT Sports and all the good stuff. See you soon.